It's the start of a normal working day. As the city wakes, so too do the people sleeping rough. Every morning, homeless charity The Wallach hands out breakfast. Okay? Yeah? He did that. Good. For many, it's the only food and drink they'll get this morning. Behind Wales' biggest shopping centre, the team finds Sean and Luke. Well, by the past, I ended up homeless for a while and then I started living with my dad then for a while. And he passed away last year. And then, so really, yeah, on and off now for three years, like, you know, but damn, um, it's been hard, like. It's a place that the human body can cope with when you go to, like, you know, you know, if you eat people get you food, or you get a few quid in your pocket, you buy food. And I admit it, I hate to say it, I do, I beg for money. I've had no choice, like. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. He is like a dad to me now, you know, you know, so. He is like, anyway. <laughs> Loving the bits I do. Across the city, I meet James. He's been homeless for over a decade. We get drunk, uh, we get drunk enough to, so we can just fall asleep. Just forget about everything yeah. and then wake up the next day and just do the same again. It's very, very difficult of trying to get out of it. This bus is unique to Cardiff. Run by the Salvation Army, it hands out food and clothes and can assign emergency hostel beds. For James and many others, a visit here is a highlight of his day. I come up to the homeless bus to get a hot drink and to see what see my friends and get get some food as well. Well, it's getting dark and there's just one more opportunity tonight for food to be given out, and then it's a matter of finding somewhere to sleep. We've just been told that there are only four emergency places left this evening, and that space inside on the floor. And from what we've seen. This morning, well, that means other people are going to be sleeping on the streets. Just up the road is a charity soup kitchen. James knows it's the last chance to get food. He doesn't know when the next one will be. It's a bit later now and you, yeah. you've managed to get yourself some food. What have you got? Some cheese and pickle sandwiches. And some, I've got cake in there. And some chocolate bars. As we leave here, we meet Christina. She spent most of her life on the streets. As a young runaway, I'm from Warrington originally. How old were you when you left home? Eight. You get institutionalised, I think. And I got an 18-month-old little boy, so I got to try and break out of the system somehow. When you say institutionalised, does that involve addiction as well and drugs? Yeah. Christina's keen to show me her makeshift home. It's her sanctuary. It's like a little palace at the moment. Is it? It's scary sometimes, though, but... This is home, is it? Yeah. It's actually... This is my humble abode, family. I made it as cosy as possible. The outside world don't see this side of it, though. I need a proper place to live, proper home. Well, Someone's got to change somewhere down the line. There are a lot of people trying to do a lot to help people like Luke, Sean, James and Christina. But what's striking is their individual stories and complexities. There just cannot be a one-size-fits-all solution.